partnership is absolutely indispensable to every day of my life. Uh, I also have other members of my family here uh, who wanted to be present at this uh, news conference. Uh, my brother Gary Kucinich is here, uh, my sister Terry, and her husband Marty, uh, and I want to thank them for being here. I have other members of my team here, including uh, my campaign manager, uh, Rhonda Rohrbacher, Treasurer John Sullivan, Head of Research Dave Kelly, uh, and uh, Head of uh, Press Person Lisa Cassini, who some of you have been in touch with, and other members of our campaign staff. I, I want to uh, thank each and every one of you for your uh, attendance here, and uh, let us, let us, and also for those people who are watching on live stream. So we're ready to go. The Bible teaches us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Abraham Lincoln warned almost 166 years ago about the dangers of political polarization, how it could collapse our nation. Washington, D.C. is today a house divided by partisanship, by special interest groups, and by war. Sharp divisions are seen within the parties and between the political parties often producing gridlock, which is dangerous to our national security. Members on both sides of the aisle are engaged in partisanship so bitter and so divisive that the American people are losing faith in our government. Partisan battles are diverting attention away from the real needs of the people. Service to our nation must be superior to service to a political party. Matters of great economic importance to the American people, war, inflation, the deficit, the cost of food, shelter, energy, housing, childcare, education, and retirement security are affecting every family. The people's economic concerns, national and border security, will be the focus of our campaign and of my work in Congress. I'm announcing my candidacy for the United States House of Representatives from Ohio's 7th District as an independent because I'm uniquely able to reach in and to help heal the partisan divide, to bring people together, and to help reestablish the sense of unity, which is the essence of who we are as the United States. The 7th District is familiar territory. I represented over 20 Cuyahoga County communities in that district for 16 years, constituting approximately 45% of the present district. Except this time, only my name will be on the ballot. No label, just Dennis J. Kucinich. I have a bond of trust with the voters, which goes far beyond party labels. Throughout the years, I formed a working relationship with every community without regard to partisanship. As a result, we were able to achieve great things, saving Cleveland Steel Mill, saving a community hospital, diverting potentially dangerous rail traffic away from heavily populated areas, saving defense finance jobs, protecting the NASA Glenn Center, and more. There are generations of people who live in the 7th Congressional District in Cuyahoga County and beyond whose lives were helped by my political independence and by the service conscious work of my congressional staff. This moment is crucial. America is at the threshold of a wide war in the Middle East. We have a $34 trillion budget deficit which portends approaching fiscal ruin for our nation. My experience in rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse will help protect the U.S. Treasury. My experience in protecting America from foreign entanglements is crucial. Now, many of you in this room will remember that in the wake of 9-11, I warned against venturing into war in Iraq. Had the administration and Congress listened then, 
America would have saved the lives of thousands of our brave servicemen and service women, spared the lives of a million Iraqis, prevented the waste of over three trillion dollars and slowed its involvement in further wars in Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria. I've demonstrated proven foresight in matters of international affairs as well as the domestic economy, which I will bring back to Congress to help both Democrats and Republicans alike to think anew about America's challenges. Now more than ever, America needs in Congress persons of experience and integrity, individuals of goodwill and, and political experience to guide our nation through this difficult time. In a closely divided Congress, as an independent, my voice and vote will become pivotal. The seventh district of Ohio will become one of the most important districts and members of both parties will be well aware of the needs and priorities of my constituents and of the people of Northern Ohio. I have the experience and the energy, the knowledge and the temperament, and the willingness to serve our community and our nation once again, to help heal the divisions in our nation by thoughtfully engaging individual members across each political spectrum on a daily basis, as I did in the past. I look forward once again to meeting the people across Northern Ohio, young and old, to visit them in their homes and neighborhoods, in cities, suburbs, and rural areas, in farms and factories, in their places of work and worship, where they meet and play and go to school. This is a people's campaign. So I ask for your involvement. Please go to kucinich.com to see how you can help. That's kucinich.com. My public service has been an active expression of the tradition of government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I believe that trust in the goodness of the American people is key to restoring people's faith in government and sets us on a path to unity. People know I can be trusted to stand up for their interests. God bless our community, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. I, I want to, I, again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. And uh, at, at this point, if there's any uh, members of the media who have uh, any questions at all, I'd be happy to, uh, to hear them. And I would just ask uh, that you would stand up and state where, where you're from so we can, we can do this. Yes, sir. Uh, Dennis Friedman for Dean Meadows uh, with uh, Fox 8. Um, it is possible that Donald Trump could be reelected to uh, Congress. The current our party, the Democratic team, is opposed. Uh, the current uh, congressman is uh, endorsed by him, a former aide of his. Uh, do you think if he's in the White House and if you're in Congress, can you then bridge the divide, work with him? Well, I, I'm quite confident. Uh, that I can work with whoever the American people choose to be the next president. Uh, I've worked very closely with members of administrations across the political divide for decades. Now, to make it clear, in this election, some of my friends are for Donald Trump. Some of my friends are for President Biden. Some of my friends are for Mr. Kennedy. Now, me, I'm for my friends. Next question. Yes, sir. Hi, Dennis Sam Allard from Axios Cleveland. Uh, where do you stand on the uh, conflict in Gaza? Well, you know, had I been in Congress, I would have been a voice uh, warning against an escalation of that conflict. I think it's urgent that there be a ceasefire. It's urgent that America play a constructive role, which we're not doing right now. I mean, let's face it, uh, American resources, American bombs, 
uh, American strategic advice. So going into this, we need to be guiding Israel towards a, a place of peace. Because for all those who are concerned about Israel, people must be aware that an escalation could set off a wider war that would threaten Israel's very existence. And so as someone who considers himself uh, sympathetic to the concerns of Israel, as someone who has shown a sympathy to the concerns of the Palestinians, I think that my voice could make a pivotal difference in the Congress. Let's look at it this way. When our brothers and sisters are killing each other, it's not for us to take a side so that the slaughter can continue. It's for us to bring them together to help heal their differences so that they both may survive. That's the approach that I will take in the Congress of the United States. Yeah, I, I think that America has, um, has made a mistake in trying to overthrow the government of Russia. Uh, we have to pay attention to things here at home, and we're not doing that. We've been warned by the founders of this nation that America should not go around the lo globe looking for dragons to slay. And one could state that uh, the attempt to overthrow the government of Russia has been an economic disaster for the United States. It's resulted for many people in higher fuel prices over the last couple of years. Uh, it certainly has been a disaster for Europe. Uh, it has separated us from a country that was looking to work with us. Now look, I represented the Ukrainian community in Congress for years in, in Cleveland, and I'm very attuned to their concerns. But the United States had an obligation to help the Ukrainian community get through this period of tension and of divisiveness. And we didn't do that. Instead, we used the Ukrainian community and the young men and some women in, the Ukra in, in Ukraine to, uh, as cannon fodder against Russia. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost. That should have never happened. And our concern has to be, as the most powerful nation in the world, to use our, our assets and our ability to create peace. And that's, and that's what we should have been doing. Instead, what happened? We took a path that has separated us from uh, a number of key nations, from Brazil, from Russia, from India, from China, from South Africa. America must be the beacon of hope for the world, for peace and for social and economic justice. But when we get into these wars and we spend the resources of this country and we set the stage for broader wars, we're actually dissipating our own strength as a nation. I want to see America come home and take care of things here at home. And we have enough to do as, as Americans to take care of our own country first. My work in the United States Congress will be to focus on the needs of our people in this country. Because you know we all know of neighbors who will tell us how we should be living. And we don't like people like that. And, and the United States is losing the support of people around the world because we're getting into too many conflicts and we're inspiring conflicts. We can't do that. And again, I will go back to my own credibility on this. Many of you remember, who have been around for a while, that I warned what would happen if we went into Iraq. I warned the country that we should not do that. America has a better role to play in the world other than uh, creating wars and exporting arms everywhere. Next question, and thank you. Thank you. Next question. Yes, uh, d you had another question, sir? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've been a champion of legal immigration, but we have to seal the border. You can't have a nation without borders, really. Yes. Hi, this is Rob from Douglas Cady, the Red Albert. Uh, obviously, we all know you're a blue collar guy, you come from a blue collar family. Dad. And I'm wearing a blue suit. <laughs> right. Uh, but you know, we've got the political divide to address that. Uh, we're all completely aware of that. But with a lot of younger voters, at least ones I've been talking to, we've been hearing them calling out the economic divide as a much deeper concern for them. And this is a year that we're really going to rely on younger voters to come out. So both rural and urban areas, which the Senate district is going to cover, how do we address that economic divide? Yeah, I, well, actually, that's where the focus has to be, on the economics. Let's be quite specific about this. 
from the standpoint of young people, uh, people need jobs, they need decent wages and benefits, uh, housing opportunities are disappearing for young people. This campaign will address that. And we're going to address the fact that corporations are buying up houses across our community, and they're uh, uh, they're cornering a the market. They're monopolizing. They're they're going to they're engaging in this scheme of of uh, of pumping up the value, taking the profits, and then leaving. Young people are caught in a squeeze right now. They're caught in a squeeze in not being able to attend college, or not being able to afford college, not being able to afford a house, a place. They're stuck with rent that keeps going up and up. You know, this, this congressional campaign will reach out to the young people of this district to inspire them to the possibilities of what a nation can be because they haven't really had the opportunity to be attuned to that since 9-11 because it's all been about war. This is why we have to direct our attention back to things at home. Let's take care of things at home first. Let's show the world that America can be a beacon for its own people first. That's what the nation ought to be about. This is about America. This, I want to be very clear about this. This election is about America. It's not about any other country. I'm going to, we're going to focus on America. And everything about this campaign is going to be pointed back to the economic concerns of the American people. Because right now, with inflation, with the cost of food, with the cost of energy, these are all things that people are concerned about and are things that I have experience in dealing with. Many of you will remember that was my effort to save Cleveland's municipal electric system that finally, that, finally addressed, that finally addressed the high cost of utilities and that today the existence of that system continues to be a, a countervailing pressure against private utilities and increased rates, which are always an issue for everyone. So I, you know, this, uh, our, our campaign is going to reach out to young people. You know, it wasn't that long ago for me, in, at least you know, in my understanding, of what it was like to try to struggle to make ends meet. And yes, I come from a working class background. My father was a um, truck driver. Uh, you know, I was a member of several unions. Uh, and I also want to say in connection with, uh, with upholding the economic rights of all people and, and extending to the youth of our community, there has to be a right to organize. There has to be a right to collective bargaining, a right to strike, a right to decent wages and benefits a right to be able to get compensated if you're injured on the job, a right to a safe workplace, a right to a secure retirement, a right to participate in a political process. I mean, this is part of, of the efforts that have to be made to strengthen the, uh, the awareness of people about the importance of, of every individual's role in our economy. Next question. Yes, sir. You've forgotten more about politics than most of us in this room will ever know. Help us to see what you see. You know the road ahead is tough for an independent. What is the path to victory that you see that makes you get it with this race? Well, here's why I believe I'll win. Uh, first of all, with nearly half of the district uh, already familiar with me from the service that I provided, I, I expect that uh, the uh, years and years of, of proven ability to deliver are going to bring people to vote for me. They'll see my name on a ballot. There won't be any partisan designation, but they know the name. And they know that when they, whenever they needed something, there's no matter too small, there's no matter too large I can't deal with. And it's that experience which I think people are going to vote for right now. With, with things f falling apart nationally, with the divisions that are taking place, people want a steady hand, you know? They want somebody who can get in there and use the experience for them. Because my experience is in representing the people, not in representing interest groups. All of you know that. I, I've, I've never gone out there on behalf of any interest group and uh, against the ad adverse interests of my constituents. People know that about me. They know that I'll stand up and I'll fight for them. And because of that, um, I expect that all of the people who are in Cuyahoga County, some of whom moved from the city of Cleveland into the suburbs, the people who move from Cuyahoga County into Medina, and there's plenty of those, they're ready to vote for me. And I think we're pet, you know, I think the Gallup uh, had a poll published the other day where something like 47% of the American people uh, see themselves as independent. Well, with me, I reach across the divide, I embrace Democrats, Republicans, independents, and we're going to bring them all together, 
And as a result, I'll be a voice for everyone in the United States Congress. Yes, sir. Mr. Namath. Mark Namath from Signal Cleveland. How has Cleveland changed since you last represented Congress? Well, you know, the we don't have the industrial strength that we should have. I mean, I was glad to be instrumental in saving that steel mill. But the truth is, Cleveland has always been in a location to be an economic engine for the country. It's just that our trade agreements, NAFTA, GATT, and China Trade, have stripped our ability to be able to create, not just have the jobs that build America, but also to support middle class families. We have to get back to rebuilding America and rebuilding our basic industries, steel, automotive, aerospace, and shipping. Cleveland, Northeastern Ohio, needs to be an engine of that again. That would be my, you know, part of my work in Congress in reflecting on where we've lost our ability to be able to have a, a greater economic impact. We'll be focused on, uh, on what, where we've been because that was, a, we have to remember how powerful this area has been economically. And yet we have seen a slow and steady decline in the standard of living because we've chased away good paying, manufacturing, middle class jobs. We want to bring those back. We want to rebuild those industries. And there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing it in the Midwest. And, and this is something that we have to correct our trade agreements in order to make that happen. And we have to have the intent to rebuild America. And that's something that I've been saying for years. We have to rebuild our country. We, it, how much better it would be to focus on rebuilding America instead of providing bombs to blow up other countries. So, you know, this is where my experience comes in here and my understanding of, of the needs of communities, uh, city and suburb and rural. I, it's going to make a difference in the Congress. One other thing, Mark. You know, Cleveland's gone through some great difficulties with uh, crime. There's a lot of neighborhoods that are suffering under an onslaught of crime. Uh, you know, local police will probably need more help. There needs to be more money going in for the purposes of, of strengthening uh, uh, communities so that they can be safe. And, you know, there's changes in more sensitivity, and there should be, towards uh, in the criminal justice system. But at the same time, people want to know that they're going to be safe in their neighborhoods. And so I'm, you know, I, Cleveland, uh, I, love, I love this community. I love the city. I love the area. And that's why I'm stepping forward to uh, be of service again. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, ne any other questions before we? Just one last follow-up. Uh, sure. You've talked a lot about why you're an independent. But if you were to rank the issues, where does the, the White House's position on the current wars rank on your, your decision to become an independent? It's all, it, it, it's all together. Here's why. Because we have to understand there's a link between war and the economy. It, in the past, and you know, after World War II, was the idea that uh, a, a wartime economy somehow encouraged economic productivity. That's not true anymore. What's happening is that uh, our continued spending for war is driving a tremendous national deficit. Y anybody can see that. It's, it's probably, I would guess, that of the $34 trillion deficit right now, as much as almost a third of it could be directly and indirectly attributable to these wars. We're losing our economic elasticity support. So the number one issue is the economy, but it's linked firmly to America's choices that put us on a path towards war. Right now, at this very moment, the unwise choices that have been made that have set us on a path of conflict in the Middle East that could expand very quickly. And this is why this candidacy becomes of great importance to people uh, not just in northern Ohio, but nationally as well, because there needs to be someone who is not locked into the limited thinking that exists in Washington that keeps us believing falsely that war is the only option. It is not. We have to, we have to begin to explore what, I, what uh, Franklin Roosevelt called the science of human relations, and I'm prepared to do that. We have to take a, an approach where Ronald Reagan talked about America being strong, but also about taking care of things here at home. So th these are the kinds of sensibilities that I'll bring to Congress. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I ask all those who are...
Um, all those who are watching the live stream, uh, please go to Kucinich.com, join our efforts, and now we go forward. Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Thank you.